And good evening, dear friends. Oh my goodness, uh, happy Tuesday. Uh, thank you so much for being with us again tonight. Uh, my name is Nicholas Vaselli. I am the artistic director of Theater Breaking Through Barriers. And I am indeed, once again, coming to you so very, very live from here, uh, deep in the heart of the Thunderdome, right here in glorious Midtown Manhattan. And on behalf of all of our artists, I want to cordially welcome each and every one of you to Theater Breaking Through Barriers sixth Virtual Playmakers Intensive or VPI. I always do it wrong. Six star changers. Uh, today is Tuesday. That means we are officially, we have officially completed one third of our 15 day jaunt, 15 day intensive. I like to think of this as a 15 course meal um, that every course, it just gets better and better and better. So that by the time we're finished with this, you will look back on this and say, what a fulfilling uh, feast. Uh, and because all of these, all of the works that we're creating uh, or that we're presenting are all new. They're brand new. They've never been seen before. They didn't exist three weeks ago. So it's, it's a joy to be able to present them all to you. Um, I hope you saw last night's show. We had a really oh, beautiful play by Peter Mark called Remember. And I loved the play so much because it, it, it really, um, it sort of in, encapsulated and embodied uh, sort of the spirit of what we're trying to convey in, in Star Changers. And in, in very simple ways, it just nudged you, nudged us and reminded, reminded us of how, how significant we all are in, in this life of ours. Um, tonight's show, uh, we have a wonder, just a wonderful, great change of pace. Uh, and I'm, I'm so excited to be able to share it with you. Um, this year marks the 50th anniversary of The Godfather. So anyone that likes The Godfather will like this play. Anybody that likes The Sopranos will like this play. It's kind of like The Godfather and The Sopranos with puns. It was written by everybody, the, the ubiquitous, the, you know, everybody knows the great Stuart Green. Stuart is a uh, amazing. He's got this fantastical mind, this playground of a mind, and he loves words, and he's a great writer, and he's a great director, and he's a great actor, and a great friend, and he's done so much for our company because he's a connector. He, he brought in so many wonderful artists um, uh, who are working with us for the first time, so uh, I, I just want to express how much I love Stuart, and uh, I, I love this, this play. The play was directed by Ella Mock. Now, this is the first time we're working with Ella. And I hope, I pray that this is not the last time because they are an amazing, brilliant uh, talent. So uh, just so excited uh, that, that, uh, that Ella's working with us. And uh, again, stellar cast, stellar cast. George Asciotis, the great, the, 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 the one of my dearest friends, George Asciotis, Christopher Hurt, oh, <laughs> heaven, and oh my God, Veronica Cruz, amazing, amazing. So without, and without talking anymore, I, I want to um, allow our artists to do a brief audio description for the benefit of anyone who uh, is, is tuning in who can't see us so that you'll be, uh, you'll be all tuned in and ready to roll here. So without anything else, take it over guys. Our Dramatis Personae Maximus. Hi, I'm Connie Colorichura. Not gonna tell you my age, but I'll say this. I have straight shoulder length black hair and I'm wearing a nice soft uh, black jacket with a tank toppy thing that's got some fancy frills on the top. My furniture is draped in black silk and there's a bouquet of flowers and framed photos lining the table beside me. Hey, I'm Tiny Tommy Contrastatura. Age-wise, well, let's just say I wore out my Billy Joel vinyl somewhere in the 80s. My hair is uh, a mature silver on the sides. I got a little on top, which drives the ladies wild. Another thing that uh, revs their engines is my gold chains, my silver Rolex, and my dark brown shades. 
for some added mystery. I'm wearing a blue button down shirt, but I ain't afraid of sharing my chest with the world. Behind me is some, some flannel shirts hanging on the back of the closet door, a cardboard box, some clothes cluttered in a pile. It's all part of the ambiance. Welcome. Um, Tony Contralto, the patriarch of La Familia. I have white hair and white goatee and mustache. Nice contrast against the silk burgundy button down I'm wearing. I got my shirt open like in the old country and I have got my favorite cross hanging around my neck. I'm sitting comfortable in a plush leather recliner. Back of me, darkened window, darkening window uh, where the moonlight touches street light. For a touch of nature, I got some leafy green plants on the windowsill that remind me of mama's garden. I'm a simple, simple man with simple taste. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy Stuart Green's The Contraltos. At Rise. Lights up on Connie Coloratura and Tiny Tommy Contresatura online via two separate Zoom boxes. Connie is applying her makeup while Tommy wears shades and eats crackers from a box. So I woke up this morning. <sighs> right? With FN blue moon in my eyes. Oh, no. Yes. Effin cat bastard. Why don't you shut the door when you go to sleep? Because he wouldn't like that. Come on, he's just the cat. Tommy, don't you ever say the J word about my family. Tommy takes off his shades and replaces them with clear lensed glasses. I'm sorry, Connie, but uh, come on, <laughs> he's adopted. Doesn't matter. If I hadn't found him by Villa Napoli, he'd still be eating out of that dumpster. Um, that's not so bad. Food was good last couple of times. Don't get <laughs> smart with me. Sorry. I just think you'd sleep better without a cat. You know, maybe uh, if you wanted. Don't start that again, Tommy. Come on, Connie. I wouldn't wake you in the morning. Oh, yeah. First off, no. Second, I heard you snore like an alto. From who? More like from hoot. I got it sorted. Doesn't matter. No, really. I got a CPAP machine. <laughs> Good for you. Helps me regulate. Great. Gives me rest and stamina for, uh, <laughs> well, you know. Go into the bathroom in the middle of the night? Yeah, but also go into the fridge too. <laughs> Tommy, we've been through this. You kissed my cousin, my sister, my mother. All on the cheek, except your mom. She always finds a way front and center. The point is, no. Plus, we're here to pay our virtual respects. You forget that? No, Connie, you're right. Ugh, today is all about Danny the bird. Oh, Danny. Hey, it's nice. They, they set up a virtual thing, you know, breakout rooms and all. Yeah. A chance for everyone to check in. Poor Danny. I can't believe it. Me neither. Hey, why'd they call him the bird anyway? He always flew away. Ah, <laughs> better than Charlie the tuna. Remember how scared he was to swim with us? Yeah, that chicken of the sea. <laughs> Unlike Danny, who's now swimming with the fishes. You still love him, don't you? Yeah. You still light your fire? 
like strike anywhere matches. You still fan your flame? Like a Dyson or Vornado. He's still. Stop, Tommy, stop. I can't help it. Don't try. I love you, Connie. No, you don't. I do. That, that whole Latin American thing just turns me on. The what? The Latin American thing. You're crazy. No, I'm not. Tommy, I'm Italian American and speak Latin. That's it. Yeah, but you read Cicero fresh off the page. Big effing deal, Tommy. You want to oh. learn Latin, go to Catholic school. <laughs> I would, but... Uh, but what? Nuns scare me. Sister Barada scares you? After she berated me at the church. F and fondue. Who fills their thermos with holy water? I had a devilish thirst. Sister Gorgonzola, too? Oh, she makes me feel blue. Let me guess. Sister Manchego, Sister Telegio, and Sister Ricotta as well? <laughs> too cultured for me. I'm a simple guy with simple tastes. For good about it. You're a grown man. Get over it. I wish I could. I just uh, can't break the habit. <laughs> Connie gets a text, puts up her hand, indicating one uh, moment while she reads it. Oh, okay. They're going to let us in now. Tommy takes off his regular glasses, puts on his sunglasses respectfully. Good. Oh, it'll be nice to see Mr. C. He's your uncle. Why do you call him Mr. C? He likes to keep things short. Well, despite all the stupid stuff you say and do, he likes you. <laughs> At least one of you does. Tony Contralto appears on the screen in his own Zoom box. Hey, Tony. Hey, good day, Mr. C. Tony, Tommy, uh, thanks for coming. I wish we were here under different circumstances, but you know, things happen. Uh, just know, if you have anything you want to say to me personally, type it in the private chat and my screen reader will do the honors. Oh, hey, Mr. C, didn't they just uh, put out a new version of Jaws? Not the time, Tony. Well, uh... Tommy, embarrassed, takes off his sunglasses, puts on his regular glasses. I'm sorry. My deepest apologies, Mr. C. We're so sorry about Danny. Tony makes a reverent gesture acknowledging their respects. Thanks. Thank you. As you know, my boy Danny's, well, moved on. I won't lie, it hurts. Maybe it's for the better. Connie, you guys were practically engaged from birth. Tommy. You spent all your life as their third wheel. More like second fiddle. As you know, now Danny's swimming with the fishes. The whole thing troubles me. There's only one thing I gotta know. And I need both your help figuring this one out. Connie and Tommy lean in with fervent anticipation while Tony searches his soul for the right word. <sighs> what middle-aged man takes a entry-level job at SeaWorld. I yeah, know, right? Right. Go work for a vet or an aquarium. I guess uh, SeaWorld is kind of an aquarium. Shut up, Tommy. Oh, sorry, but it is. With corporate food options. I know he liked working at Red Lobster, but still. This is totally different. What? He likes Shamu better than us. Oh. Effing killer whales. Or orcas. Makes them sound friendlier. It doesn't make sense. I mean, you guys got along well enough. Did he ever say anything like, uh, let's go catch and release fishing? No, sir. We'd hang out on the boardwalk, and uh, but that's it. Nothing fishy? Not that I can recall. Oh, although, 
come to think of it, we never went out for sushi. Interesting. Yeah. Connie, you lived together for years. Anything? Nothing. I mean, it was odd. He had the Free Willy trilogy, but then again, I still have my Little Mermaid VHS. <laughs> yeah. You played that thing till the tape wore out. Anything else? He loved singing sea shanties in the shower. But that's fresh water. Fascinating. Tommy, what did you guys do for fun? Uh, we like to drink uh, tap, you know, water at the bars, uh, play pool, and go watch baseball games. Yeah, he always made a fuss when that one team came to town. Right. Right, I remember. Which, which one was it? It was the, um, uh, the Miami one. Oh, okay. That's Floridian? It's a clue. Yeah. Come to think of it, their, their mascot was a, a, a fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was the one with the spear-like snout. There are plenty of fish with snouts. Not uh, on a baseball jersey. Fine. Oh, what was it? it it's the... Uh, it's the, it's the Ooh, Connie, the way you say it. Shut up, Tommy. Yeah, it was an Istiaphoridae. Oh, uh, what? A marlin. Istiaphoridae is Latin for marlin, part of the Animalia kingdom. Oh, you both speak like angels. The team's mascot was an effing marlin. It all makes sense now. Everything he did. The Philippa Marathons. The saltwater taffy. The Aquaman under rose. They all put their hands to their faces like Kevin in Home Alone and come to a simultaneous revelation in three, two, one. Ah! What a shame. What a scam. What a fluke. He was showboating all along. How could I miss so many clues? It's okay, Tony. We all did. If I had known, maybe I could have gotten him a dog or a cat or a... Uh, what, Tony? A goldfish. If you did, he never would have ate fish on Good Friday. Yeah. His plate was always empty. I remember how he'd wait for everyone to be seated and then serve us from the kitchen. He said the fish was so good, he finished it before getting back to the table. I always loved Good Friday at your place. Good food, great company, <laughs> and Mr. Wolf. <laughs> the neighbor's dog? Yeah, Mr. Wolf. He was always outside when I left. <laughs> yeah, we could hear him, especially before dinner. <laughs> he must have had radar hearing the plates clank as we set the tables. <laughs> it's Sonar, Tommy, sonar. Wait a second. Tommy, you might be onto something. Is it worth discussing later over calamari? Connie puts up her hand, pausing Tommy. Okay, so he'd go to the kitchen with his plate before dinner. Always. He never had any leftovers. Never. And Mr. Wolf was there every Good Friday. Yeah, yeah. He was so happy, <laughs> waiting right by the door to see me. It's funny. He'd always belch when I rubbed his belly. <laughs> oh, his breath, though, whoa, holy cannoli. Smelled like a half a cup of green onions, one tablespoon of olive oil, and several notes of imported garlic. <laughs> uh, why do I know those ingredients? My wife's famous recipe. What? Holy Saturday. Mr. Wolf was in on it too. No wonder he fetched me cigars Easter Sunday. Cubans too. This is bigger than we thought. Forget about it. Aye, don't matter no more. Then he's gone. It's a shame. I always wanted him to be an accountant like Mel. Who? Your second nephew thrice removed. Oh. Connie, Tommy, a 
thanks for stopping by your, oh, whatever the heck this is. My pleasure, sir. Sure thing, Tony. Tommy, you may go. Send my regards to your mother and be well. Oh, sure thing, Mr. C. If you need anything, just let me know. And Connie, if you need to chat or uh, want to catch the John Hurd Festival on Friday, they're playing Sharknado. Goodbye, Tommy. Sure thing. Oh, and uh, Connie. Tommy suggestively replaces his regular glasses for shades as he says, Ut Ameris. I'm a Billy Esto. Uh, nice try, Tommy, but the saying is Ut Ameris. I'm a Billy Sesto. Oh, oh, like an angel. <laughs> See you around. Take care of yourself. <laughs> I mean it. Tommy waves and exits. You better stick with English. Good phrase, though. If you want to be loved, be lovable. He's been after me for years. Your heart's never been with him. Nah, just Danny. I want to know why he left. Oh. Ugh. I haven't had a conversation in weeks that passes the Bechtel test. Why don't you go to him? Florida? I don't know. He left so suddenly and, and, and this whole hidden life. Now he's out in open water. Maybe he'll be honest with you. Maybe. Tell your wife. Go to Danny in this deep blue sea world. If nothing else, have a nice vacation. Tina and I will watch Blue Moon. Just one thing. What's that? Look at their website for off-peak visiting hours first. Thanks, Tony. It can't hurt, right? Nope. Audentes fortuna juvat. Indeed. Fortune favors the brave. Love you, Tony. Love you, kid. Connie blows him a kiss and her Zoom box disappears. Tony takes a second, holds the cross around his neck and kisses it as he looks toward the heavens and cries out, Fortuna! Before Tony's Zoom box fades out. <laughs> I told you, lots of puns, great sense of humor, brilliant performances. Ladies and gentlemen, the Contraltos. Come on back, you guys. Let's talk about this. Woo! George, Georgie. Hey. There he is. Stuart, Stuart, Stuart's grown facial hair. Oh my God. Veronica. I love you, Veronica. That's all I'm going to say. Ella, so, so thrilled. And of course, the amazing Christopher Hurt. All of you. Ah, uh, oh, you. <laughs> you. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Um, <laughs> this was, this, this had to be a lot of fun to work with. Um, I, I, um, yeah, I want to know how, you know, how you all enjoyed this or, or I want to know all about all of this, uh, what you felt about it. The commitment on behalf of all of you, all of you was just extraordinary. So thank you for that. But let's start with uh, Mr. Green right here. Hello. Hello, Stuart. How are you? I don't Good. have to introduce you. you. Everyone knows who you are. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 all right what what then and of course tucker thanks for every thanks for coming in tucker uh everyone tucker. uh for those i don't I, again another one who everyone knows at this point the amazing tucker salivara our tech guru the um the founder of the feast as it were because if it were not for tucker we would not be connected virtually as we are and ha as we have been so um so glad that the gang's all here um Stuart, Tell me about this play. What's up with this? When did this happen? <laughs> How did this start? Well, it happened probably a couple of weeks ago when we got together. Uh, but, um, you know, 
anytime I write for people, I try to figure out what do they want to work on and what interests them. And so what happened was I, I know George and I think Veronica and even Chris had said that they mm -hmm. wanted to do something street smart and kind of gritty. And Veronica didn't want to play anymore, you know, cute, you know, the, the Latin, the Latina roles and things like that. So I was like, I started that kind of putting it forward. And then, and through that, I came up with the Latin American thing. And, and then, um, and then just the Sopranos was just kind of rattling through my head of just seeing how, how these wonderful actors led by our wonderful director, Ella, I must say, yeah. um, how, how to put them in a world together. And so, um, then I just sat in the chair. I let it gestate for a few days. And yeah, uh, the puns did roll. Uh, and it just became more and more fun as it became more and more silly uh, to, to put it together. And I'm like, all right, let's see what they do with this. And they just took it, took it even further than I could have. Yeah, it, it was, it was, it was <laughs> rife with puns. It was a pun, it was a pun fest. It was yeah. a virtual, yeah. Punctful. Yes, punctilious. <laughs> you, you punctilious. Yes, it's funny. We, right. we, we pontificated many times. Yeah. I know it. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, this is how rehearsals were. Okay. This is how. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. You know, uh, Stuart, we we have we have a lot of uh, exchanges, text exchanges that are that very thing, and yeah. so I, I I know it's one of your favorite favorite pastime so um you did a wonderful job with this and yes indeed as i as i had mentioned at the top it's the 50th anniversary of the godfather and um they've been showing a lot of sopranos on the uh, reruns on television so I, I thought this was hilarious i thought it was great but what i what i loved um was the fact that all, everybody just was so on board with it and everybody committed to it mm -hmm. um all right ella this is your first time. I normally would say I would normally wait to talk to you at the end because you're the you're this is your first time working with with us, but working with this group. But I'm gonna because but you've directed this one. Um, what was this like for you? This was such a blast. Um, it really had me. <laughs> so when I was a kid, I was really into old radio shows. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that I listened to with my parents a lot. And that's the thing that kept coming up with this play for me is even though we are presenting it like with a visual medium, mm -hmm. I wanted it to play out like a radio show so that voices are really distinctive, actions are, are clear and described and like the world is really built out in, yeah. um, in the voices of the characters. So I think that that's where I'm deriving the most joy right now. Uh, mm -hmm. is in hearing these fully fledged characters living in these voices. Yeah. Um, what just such a fun world to play in. Mm -hmm. it, I have to tell you, I, I agree with you on that. Um, you know, we talk a lot about in, in, in doing this work, um, not just the accessibility, but the immediacy of it. And the fact that, um, you know, we, is this, is this, this is live. It is not live, like, you know, like live in-person theater and it would never be, but it does have its own things going on with it. And, and it kind of is almost like sitting around the radio and, and listening to this, but only uh, to actually get a, an opportunity to see the artists um, and, and, you know, and see the expressions on, on their faces. It just adds this whole other layer, a whole other dimension. And this, this is great. It's just so much fun. Uh, but you you nailed this. Have you have you directed a lot of Zoom stuff over the last couple of years? I wasn't doing a ton of directing. I was um, acting in some Zoom stuff, and I uh, I'm also an intimacy choreographer and consultant, and so I was doing some of that with Zoom mm -hmm. work. Um, but no, this is my first time really sitting down and uh, doing the director job. Rock uh, again, you're you're so this is very, very cool. I'm so excited. I hope you'll direct more. I know that you do you're also incredibly multi-talented. You do you do everything, you act <laughs> and you and you write, and we and we're gonna be doing one of your shows on Friday, your Friday night show. So uh, you, you gotta stay tuned for, for Ella because you're going we'll to all be there. You bet. You're going, you're going, you are going to get to see 
Ellis work uh, as a writer on Friday. And, and so you want to get a real full picture, well-rounded picture of, of the, the genius that is Ella. <laughs> oh gosh, thank yeah, you. <laughs> you will get, you'll get that opportunity. Um, so you guys, all right. Um, one of the great things that helps uh, that's, that really sells this wonderful script and the one, your wonderful direction is three very committed artists. Um, and I, I have to tell you, I love them all. The only one I never got a chance to act on stage with personally is Veronica, but I would, I would kill for that opportunity because I just, um, I adore you. And, and I, I, adore, um, I adore your partner, Dan, as you know, uh, you got to see Dan uh, teach out, perform on um, Friday, our opening night, and you'll get to see Dan perform again um, this weekend. But, and you're performing twice as well. This was number one for you as well. All right, so, so what was, I'm, I'm gonna start with you. Cause- Oh no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what, tell me, tell me what this was like. Was this, was this a, a great fun for you? I mean, did, did it live up to the idea of, I don't wanna play the, the, the stock like Latina character and all Yeah, that? it was so much fun. This is, I couldn't have imagined a better a project to work on and better people to work with. It was amazing. Yeah, you and you nailed it. You nailed it. You were so perfect. You could yeah. easily, you. I mean, that's the, the, keep that keep that role in your in your toolbox because you nailed it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, you're great. You're really really great. I loved it. Uh, yeah, I just think you're you're hilarious. And uh, so I've got I've gotten to see you play comedy, and I've gotten to see you play serious work. So you just, I'm always amazed by you. Thank um, you. Uh, George, I'm going to come to you next because this is, I, isn't this just, I mean, we've worked together on everything. I, you know, we have done so much theater together, you and since I. Since 88. Since 1988. 88. Yeah. All right. Now we're really dating uh, this. <laughs> um, <laughs> George, can, can we just talk a little bit about that first experience uh, that we we had together? I know it's a diversion from this, but I wanna I wanna just touch on it. Sure. I um, uh, you, you, no, I want I want you to start this one because because people have heard what I how I yeah you know, from my end, but I want to hear from your end. Well, I auditioned for a production of Julius Caesar at um, uh, where was it? Uh, the University of Scranton, right? The University and, of Scranton. And uh, it was uh, directed by Richard Harris. And I had this tiny little role as Cinna, the, um, uh, the poet, mm. who is confused with Cinna, the conspiracy, conspirator, and uh, winds up hung. Anyway, uh, and in that same production, uh, Nick was in the cast and we struck up a, a friendship, a, 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 you know, a kind of an acquaintanceship that was pretty uh, automatically, you know, like easy, you know, it wasn't like any struggle for um, conversing and exchanging ideas. And also because of that, I got to meet and was invited to Nick's family for, for Sunday lunch a couple of times for which I am eternally grateful because I was a stranger in a strange land, so to speak. And here I had a wonderful, warm, uh, welcoming family that took me in and uh, kind of uh, made me like one of their own. Yeah. Well, George, that was easy. I mean, again, you are, your, your uh, ancestry is uh, Greek. You're Greek, uh, Greek American. I am uh, Italian American ancestry. So you were part of the family. You really, you really were. You know uh, the expression are. "una fazza, una razza." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, so we, we, yeah, we had a great. We, we became really good friends, and um, th that production. Richard Harris adored George. By the way, he 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 expanded George's role. George was cast as Sin of the Poet, and they were basically the mob was supposed to capture him and lynch him, and then they had an effigy of George that they were they had to hang. But but Harris just loved George so much 
he turned his role. He decided that George Cinna was the was was Caesar's court poet, and everywhere Caesar went, Cinna went. And then he brought me back from the dead. <laughs> right, and then at the end he brought him back from the dead. George, George, massive. Your work is massive. <laughs> Yep. That was a great experience. And and then uh, late, and then George talked about while we were there, he said, I work with this company in New York called Theater by the Blind, and we're doing a production in the spring. And that production was um, The Unexpected Guest. And so uh, I- oh, it, No, it was, what, oh yes, that's right. Sorry, you're right. Of course and, you are. And I can't, of course, of course don't be silly. And, <laughs> and I, I, I came out to New York to see that in 1988. And that was the first time I had, I was exposed to this company and it it just just blew me away so and it's it's been it's it's been um uh, love ever since uh, <laughs> that's all i have to say <laughs> um and then a few years uh well we were working together and it was i think around when would, when did we do um the the um the, was it the rules of charity I forget the year that was, but that 2000, it's 2007. 2007, yeah, yeah, I think so. And we were working in this play, this play by John Beluso and um, George, uh, uh, unfortunately, sadly had to drop out uh, of the play because of pers for personal um, situation, family situation. And um, we needed to replace George and in walks Christopher Hurt and Chris, Chris came into that whole scene, uh, not knowing he was going to be, he was going to take the role. He was supposed to be an understudy because we weren't sure if George was going to be able to do it or not. So he comes in to watch a rehearsal that one night and uh, at a, the first break, the director, Ike Shamlin came down and said, do you think you're interested? And uh, Chris said, yeah, I, George can't come back. Are you interested? And Chris said, yes, okay. <laughs> Bless you. <Thank> you. <laughs> So Chris, take it from there. Oh, I can't. Before that, I had auditioned for you guys a couple of times and uh, I was going to do a Hamlet, maybe, I don't know, eight or 10 years before Rules of Charity. I can't yes. remember. And then it turned out there was, um, there was a conflict and I couldn't do it. So I was very disappointed about that. But it's like Hamlet, George and I way. kept sort was of it, Was it the first Hamlet that we did? I don't know whether it was the first or the second. Oh, it had to be the second. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the, the, the second. I, I think you guys had done one before. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean- the, With Nick playing the Hamlet, about... right? Yes, that was yeah. the second one. Right. You, you graduated from Hamlet to- the king role to the three kings yes the kings. Mm -hmm. i'm sorry christopher i didn't mean to interrupt no 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 that, that that's fine but yeah i mean so i'm i've missed all of these opportunities to to act with the greek so now i act with the greek <laughs> and the latin here uh -huh. <laughs> it's great and i'm just trying to keep up i'm just trying to keep up with these mm -hmm. yeah so, but it was so really that, fun. I mean, I think Stuart sort of wrote us a sandbox that we could play in, and it was really, really fun to play in it. I mm -hmm. mean, it's it's a world that sort of exists in people's imaginations, or and you know, up on the screen and stuff with the with the sopranos. Oh, I, right in the middle of this rehearsal process, I turn on the TV, and there is something called the Many Saints of Newark, which I guess yes. is a Sopranos prequel. So it's like all of a sudden the world that you know we've been playing around in is that there's a new version of it up on the screen. So mm -hmm. that, that, that was fun, but it's but it's it's silly, it's punny, it's playful. It's it's a world that's sort of been provided to us, and we get to fill it in with relationships and jokes and and fun mm -hmm. stuff and choices and yeah. Yeah, uh, I I love that, and I love to see you play roles like this, Chris, because you 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 do them so well and. I know that in your career, you've had this great opportunity to play. You have this, you have this gorgeous voice, and you do, you do a lot of, you do a lot of narration and a lot of audio books, and you've done a lot of uh, classical theater, or um, you know, you've done a lot of Chekhov, a lot because you've got, you know, you're a wonderful actor. But to see you play something that is just crazy and silly is just where you can just wind me up and let me go. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's just a lot of joy. 
it's, and it's so. fun to to play with other people who are doing the same thing. It's really yeah. really nice. So. Yeah, that, that's it. You got you, you got you got such such a solid group of really good dedicated actors and and artists. So I love I just loved this. I thought this was this was great. Um, good I, Fortuna. Yeah, good, <laughs> good for, Fortuna. Hey, oh. stop stealing my lines, Chris. Oops. Okay. I may um, have to whack you. That's right. They're recording this. Chris, I'll, I'll give you new lines, new puns, just to, to, uh -oh. to make you feel good. Yeah, I'll, I'll come out with some new. You'll, you'll get the, the, the director's cut version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the next 12 minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, um, I, I'm going to just ask one or two more questions. And then I'm, uh, it's about almost quarter after eight. So I want to give you guys a little bit of a break before we hit the next show. Um, Stuart, you have been... Um, working well i mean you've you've done a lot of work with us both before the pandemic and and during during the pandemic you were involved you were one of the few that has been involved in every one of our intensives and have done everything um you know you've, you've served as a writer as a director and as an actor um i i just i i would love you to just sort of give me a little thought or a little insight um about this experience as a whole in terms of creating work that is generated in this medium mm. um so yeah i mean it's it's i mean to to each medium its own and so um you know what i i think it's best said like this um and this made a little tangent but the Foo Fighters, I think they had a, a movie that came out and they, the way they would write is they would have a, um, a crossboard and they would have it timed out and in each section was a little pocket of a structure, right? And so likewise, and so when they were working on that one thing, they were just working on that one thing. And then when that time went, they released it and went on to the next. And I think having six different chapters to really just focus in and just dive deep with really great actors, writers, directors, um, and especially what's going on outside of, of the Zoom box. Mm -hmm. um, it's been such a nice little time capsule. Um, and each production with it is not only a chance to try something new, but it's also a mini reunion because I've worked with Veronica several times before and uh, Christopher I'd never had a chance to, but this time we finally landed. This is the first time working with Ella and then George, we've worked together before on parent teachers. So um, it's been interesting, you know, just kind of putting everything together and then just focusing this time around. But I, I, it has been like going through a canal and each lock is a different VPI, uh, yeah. very different experience with some similarities, but uh, the whole process has been really awesome. And, um, you know, I, I feel like my writing has gotten better uh, and also, um trying to serve the not only the director but the other actors uh, i feel like i've become more attuned to that so um and then just working with zoom and then also the uh the folks who do closed caption and the audio readers and all these other elements that are so integral to the production has informed me as to how to approach this medium and then also working with uh, with act artists of various abilities and disabilities as well. So I think all things considered, it's, uh, it's, it's really expanded my toolbox and uh, expanded the way that I, that I come to work. So thank you and, and thank this cast and crew for such a wonderful uh, orbit around this, uh, this writing sun, if you will. No, thank you. Oh my God, that's great. That's great. I want to ask another question, which I'm going to sort of broach right now, and we won't talk about it until after the second show, which I hope okay. you all join us for on Facebook in a few minutes. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, the great thing of this is we get to do the show twice every evening, so I'll get two shots of performing it. Um, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the whole concept of, uh, you know, the, when, we, when we create as live as, as stage actors, the energy is on stage, the energy is in the room, um, and I want to, I want to talk, and there's also, a, 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 obviously, when you're together, there is much more intimacy in terms of the interpersonal exchange of energy, and uh, 
there was always a concern that that might not be the case here on this um, particular medium. But um, I would love to get your, your thoughts and ideas, particularly you, Ella, because you do a lot of other things, especially when it comes to um, intimacy and, and all of that. How does that work and how does that translate on a medium such as this? So um, you know, just hold the answer because that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, and, and I would love to, I'd love to be able to, to share all that with our, our audience. And that should hopefully be a little teaser and compel you to join us for our second show, ladies and gentlemen. I so, saw what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> clever, Look clever. Hanger. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, I just want to thank all of you for your incredible talent and for um, making a difference, uh, not only for this company, but uh, for me personally. Um, Tucker, do you have anything you want to add, say before we? Uh... I didn't want to lie. I was like, I don't want to. You got to say, got to just chime in, Tucker. Just wait. I'm a kid. I'm ready for the second show. All righty. Well, we're gonna. So you. So next time, you're gonna. You're, you. You can ask your questions as well, please, or 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 make your comments for that. Um. I I want to thank all of you guys for everything that you do and are, and I want to thank all of you for tuning in uh, with us and spending some time with us this evening. Uh, again, you're, you're the audience. And even though we can't feel you, you're not in the room, we know you're there. And that makes all of the difference in the world. Um, thank you for being with us. Uh, we hope you enjoy uh, what, we're, what we're being able to, um, uh, to share with you. Please tell your family and friends uh, and, and everybody about us. If you like what you see, if you don't like what you see, tell them anyway. <laughs> um, we hope that you'll be able to uh, get them to tune in and maybe we can have a nice little TVTV VPI Zoom party. I think that would be great fun. Um, uh, you can go to our website, tvtv.org. You can see, check out uh, our website, what we do, everything about us. Um, uh, if you really, really like us, uh, you can click the yellow donate button at the top of the homepage and that will, um, the, the, you know, of course, your time and your attention is treasured. But if you wanted to support us uh, a little bit further, we, of course, will, will treasure that as well. So we hope that you will consider that. Um, and I hope you'll tune in tomorrow because tomorrow, once again, we're shifting gears and we are going to present uh, a, a brand new original play by uh, another incredible artist, Rebecca Quinn Robertson. Rebecca, uh, you have seen as a director, well, not so that she's, I don't know if Rebecca ever directed for us, but has written and acted and is doing well. She does everything. So we are going to be featuring her uh, play tomorrow evening called Of Letters or The Book Club. So I hope you will tune in for that. Uh, it was directed by another first timer. Thank you, Stuart Green. Uh, uh, Subin Kara An, and it is starring powerhouse cast Samantha Debicki, Melissa Jennifer Gonzalez, Gaia Visnar. Oh, if that, that doesn't give you reasons to tune in. <laughs> I don't know what does. So please tune in 7.30 right here on Facebook, 8.30 on, or 7.30 on YouTube right here and 8.30 on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful evening and uh, about 10 minutes, come on over to Facebook and let's do this all over again. Have a great night all. Bye-bye.